If you think I am discussing loathsome and offensive, please take a moment and hear our side of the story. It all started in childhood when I ate a food served in an Indian domestic airline. The food was so toxic that it has altered the structure of my DNA forever and turned me into an autoplasmic creature who suffers excruciating pain from discussing loathsome and offensive news. And trust me, to escape uh, the pain, I now pop all sorts of habit-forming drugs as if they were peanuts and still the only way to get rid of the pain is to inflict senseless laughter on the even more senseless news. I hope you got this well. Better late than never. Hello, I'm Sumit Raghun and you're watching the most Offensive humor show on the planet. Yes, I said offensive, not authentic. We are not NPR. This episode is supposed to uh, come on air in February 2012. But considering that February has this little issue with uh, the numbers 30 and 31, I suspect it's OCD. You could very well be watching it in March or 5,000 years into the future. All I can say is better late than never. Salman Rushdie got into trouble again over his boring pick, The Satanic Verses. The Islamic fundamentalist group Darul Uloom Deoband made sure Rajdee was denied entry into the Jaipur Literature Festival. They issued a new fatwa on Rajdee. I think I know why. Islamic mullahs use fatwas more often than condoms, which is also why there are so many of them. I really thought that uh, the Islamic fundamentalists must have some brains, but looks like all they have is a universal fatwa against thinking. Anyway, I'm sure you must have heard about the political situation in Pakistan. It's the same for the past 40 years. <laughs> but that's not the joke. Uh, the joke lies somewhere else in a laboratory where extraterrestrial scientists are trying to find by staring furiously into a pig's asshole. <laughs> Why do the Islamic fundamentalists have an IQ that exactly matches the IQ of Justin Bieber fans? <laughs> These idiots don't even know how to read a map. Guys, you're supposed to do a coup in Pakistan, not Bangladesh. I think these maniacal morons are still using the maps from the 60s. When you had an East Pakistan and the North, South, no, whatever, Pakistan. So they plan a coup in Pakistan, end up with a ridiculously ill-timed coup attempt in Bangladesh. And really, I mean, you couldn't do a coup in a country like Bangladesh. <laughs> Shame on you. Next time try doing a coup in East Timor or something. But then what do you expect except a failed coup in Bangladesh? Have you ever heard of anything successful in Bangladesh? <laughs> Pakistan's Prime Minister Yusuf Raza Gilani. No, no, don't. Oh, God. Don't start laughing. That's not the joke. Gilani says that billions cannot be spent on Ijaz's security. Ijaz, of course, is the guy who loves sending Memos. Not to be confused with this guy. He just serves momos. Anyway, Gilani says that billions cannot be spent on Ijaz's security. Billions? Cannot be spent? You choose, don't have billions to begin with. How the hell are you going to spend it? Okay, as usual, uh, from one dick, let's move on to the another. Asif Ali Zardari. <laughs> Sorry, President of Pakistan, Asif Ali Zardari. People like Zardari are inspirational leaders, you know, because watching these idiots, even you become ambitious. Hey, my girlfriend says, I'm an asshole. I could be the President of Pakistan. <laughs> Zardari's media advisor, Farhaz Ispahani, says she fears abduction by the ISI. Yes, if I had a name like Isp... Ah, Honey, believe me, honey, I would have shot myself first. <laughs> but really, there is a clear and present danger here. If Zardari's media advisor is afraid of being abducted by the ISI, Zardari himself must be worried sick. No, not of being abducted by the ISI, but being given an enema by the ISI. Yep, that's what assholes worry about. Enemas and not enemies, just enemas. <laughs> Okay, here is one more Islamic joke. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not anti-Islam, okay, or anything. We just have a lot of viewers from Azerbaijan. <laughs> and they specifically want more jokes on or about Islamic people. They feel sidelined by shows like Lino or Letterman. 
because nobody makes any more Islamic jokes on those shows, you know. Uh, well, we too do not actually. We add the word fundamentalist in front of Islamic <laughs> to avoid getting sued or killed or suitably maimed. <laughs> because you see, those are the things uh, fundamentalist Islamic people do. <laughs> As opposed to Islamic people who are generally cool because they love Fridays, they hate Rebecca Black's Friday just as much as we do. Uh, they are just normal folk uh, with sometimes a bit of abnormal beard. <laughs> Moving on to news that begs to be attested. Yes, this is news. It's not made up. It's real. Hosni Mubarak's defense attorney argued in court that his client is still the president of Egypt and that his trial in criminal court violates the nation's suspended constitution. Now, this is what itches my balls. <laughs> Violating the nation's suspended constitution. First up, Egypt is not a nation. Second, how do you suspend something that wasn't there in the first place? And third, how the f can you violate something that's already suspended? But then it's Egypt, my innocent folks. Even buried stuff can get up and walk around like your mummy, provided you keep it close enough to a goddamn pyramid. <laughs> All Hosni needs uh, is to shift his basement cell in the prison to Tutankhamen's chamber. <laughs> we will be back after a short break with the world's most offensive humor. Till then.